Hey, this is Matt. Welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you tuned into this video where I'm going to be talking about an interesting company, Kintor from China, working uh, very fast on a potential anti hair loss drug, which could have like finasteride efficacy, maybe even better. I'm going to elaborate on that in this video. However, without the potential side effects, because it's a topical treatment working on the androgen pathway. So it's targeting the androgens. It's not like minoxidil, more like RU58841. But more about that later in this video. If you are enjoying these regular hair loss and hair transplant related updates from me, make sure you smash that like button right now at this very moment. Thank you very much. And before we proceed with the video, this video has been brought to you by GoFiber, which are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice from them and try them out. See if you like them. Hey, welcome back to the channel once again. My name is Matt. I'm your host on this channel where I talk about topics like hair loss, hair transplant, how to grow your hair back and eventually get your hair transplant if necessary, if treatments like finasteride and minoxidil didn't give you the satisfactory results that you wish for, which unfortunately with 70-80% of guys it's not going to be the case and that's why they opt for hair transplant, which is not a bad thing. You can inform yourself, educate yourself as much as you want on my channel about hair risk restoration as well as on my website matdominance.com where you can get my free ebook five things I wished I had known before my hair transplant and also a bunch of very useful guides on how to research your hair transplant doctor, best hair transplant doctors in Turkey and worldwide. Thank you so much. Again, smash that subscribe button and uh, notification bell if you are new to the channel. And now let's talk about Kintour, which is developing a potential anti hair loss treatment. All right, guys, let's start with this introduction to pyrolutamide or KX826, which is androgen receptor antagonist for topical dermatological use. This is again just for the illustration how the KX826 will work. It's not gonna be blocking the 5-alpha reductase, it's not gonna be you know suppressing your DHT systemically, neither topically, it's not gonna suppress any DHT or any testosterone, it's just gonna restrict your androgen receptor of your hair follicle from interacting with androgens like DHT, like testosterone, or if you're taking uh, androgenic anabolic steroids. So that's what it's gonna do. It's an androgen receptor antagonist. That's, that means that it's going to restrict the agonizing effects of androgens on the follicle, which result in further miniaturization. Trial number one and trial number two are already completed in China. Trial number one has been also com completed in uh, United States on a pyrolutamide KX826 successfully. And now uh, the trial number two in the United States is being uh, done. And uh, in China, the trial number three, the final trial guys, will or should start by the end of uh, 2021. At least that's what the company is expecting. Uh, Commands phase three clinical trial of KX826 in China for treatment of male subjects in the fourth quarter of 2021. We are concurrently conducting phase two clinical trial uh, for treatment of male subjects in the United States. This is really the treatment that I'm going to be closely following in uh, by the end of this year and next uh, year obviously and I think you should too. But now more about why they decided to do it, why they decided to, to, to develop this treatment. Well, obviously, we know that minoxidil and finasteride uh, are two treatments that uh, are like available for treating male pattern baldness since like uh, late 1990s. And we know the limitation of minoxidil. We know it works. We know it stimulates the follicles, but nobody really knows how it works and it doesn't target androgens. And that's why many guys uh, see diminishing returns or really no results with minoxidil long term. On the other hand, we have finasteride, which obviously is more effective or should be considered as the preferred solution because it's targeting the androgens obviously also for hair transplant patients much better to stick to finasteride than to me to rely on minoxidil after your hair transplant just fyi we know that there can be side effects because it's being metabolized you know systemically they definitely try to brand this treatment as like side effect free compared to finasteride but we still don't know i mean it's a drug so obviously there will be some side effects now let's come back to the 
clinical trial data which show satisfying safety profile there were like two trials like trial 1a and trial 1b i think one was the united states trial and one was the chinese trial and both trials have shown actually pretty uh safe uh, you know outcomes besides the one side effect issue in the chinese trial the the trial number one on 40 healthy chinese male and female subjects they were enrolled in the single dose phase of the phase one and there were five different doses uh, 0.5 milligram 2 6 12 and 24 milligram of the topical solution obviously also placebo and they received the treatment on their back because they were not balding this was just to determine the uh, safety profile of this drug now this was just a very short-term trial just for 14 consecutive days just to determine uh, whether there is going to be some drastic difference in the uh, concentration of that kx in the blood plasma which fortunately they didn't find and i'm going to be sharing you these results in a minute but before uh, they have found like unfortunately they have found some adverse events although mild classified as mild in this study the main adverse events were side effect was contact dermatitis so the contact dermatitis recovered and they were able to restore it after discontinuation of the drug but that's definitely something they will need to improve improve upon i don't know whether it was because of the higher concentration possibly you know they tested 2 6 12 milligram so maybe that's also the reason why in the second trial they were only experimenting with doses of 2.5 milligram and 5 milligram again in a topical solution that will make it a 0.5 percent solution or 0.25 percent solution respectively but i'm gonna come back to that in a minute now as far as the safety profile there were obviously checking whether the KX826 or its metabolite KX982 uh, could have been found in the blood plasma after the dosing and they didn't find any like elevated plasma values of uh, the KX or its metabolite only in the higher concentration or higher dose which was like 12 milligram over here also the 6 milligram has shown some spikes here and there that there was some detection in the plasma but the doses which were lower than 6 milligram like 2 milligram and 0.5 milligram were undetectable or were not uh, able to be detected in the plasma so again from six milligram and up uh, the plasma detection uh, started to occur phase 1b trial of kx826 is not ongoing anymore it's already um, successfully finished i didn't know the results but this is the study this is the phase one study which uh, was kind of uh, which is kind of referring to this u.s trial number one where total 40 subjects were evaluated i mean 32 were in the treatment group and eight placebo subjects and the doses were 2.55 10 and 20 milligram again spread over 14 day period it was pretty much the same as the first uh, trial in china that was done in uh, the united states uh, i think one year later again it seems like it's already completed the completion date was uh, in 2020 already okay but they probably announced the study uh, this year in January all right however the results I don't know uh, I wasn't able to see the results but probably they found out something similar um, I just assume uh, what was found in the Chinese trial number one now the trial number two and this is again experiment where they pretty much did the three milligram dose 12 milligram dose and 48 milligram dose uh, in a topical solution of kx826 and we see that the 48 milligram dose obviously spiked uh, the detection of that drug in the plasma as well because it's uh, quite a high dose but the three milligram dose for example didn't show any detection in the plasma and 12 milligram dose obviously shown 
or some detection in the plasma. So that's just for the information. Now the phase two trial of KX826 uh, says it's ongoing, but it's not ongoing. It has been also completed already and they announced the results uh, this year in September 8th. Now in this paper, they announced positive results. In the phase two clinical trial, which they did in China, they enrolled uh, 120 subjects where they assess the efficacy and safety, also efficacy this time, not just safety of KX826 for the treatment of male adults with androgenetic alopecia. And this is interesting because we obviously want to know uh, like the primary endpoint for phase two clinical tri trial was the change from baseline in non-velous target area hair counts, target area hair counts at 24 week in comparison with placebo. So that's something what Brizula did with the Clascoteron uh, solution in their second trial where they had the six month period and 12 month period and they were observing the improvements in target area hair count and also target area hair width and also hair growth assessment between different concentrations like 2.55%, 7.5% and also 7.5% once versus twice a day. In this case, they were doing uh, 2.5 versus five milligram uh, once versus twice a day. So that was the design of the second trial and 2.5 milligram it means it was a 0.25% solution and 5 milligram means it was a 0.5% uh, KX826 solution. So uh, this is exactly what we can see here, 2.5 milligram, 5 milligram, 2.5 and 5. Again, once a day or twice a day and obviously placebo as well. Now the results of uh, this trial, they did not really tell what exactly changed in the six month period, in the 24 week period. Unfortunately, and that's a slight disadvantage. Um, sorry, I cannot provide this to you in this video. However, once I get this information, once somebody posts it, then there are different uh, websites. There is a uh, follicle thought, a uh, good website, which also is only focused on, on uh, you know, posting these types of uh, treatments in the pipelines. Uh, make sure you follow this website. It's pretty legit, in my opinion. Great summary in a blog format, so I recommend that. Once I see it maybe here, or maybe I see it on the website of Kintor, or maybe they will kind of publish a paper on it, I'm gonna report it on this channel, and I will compare it to like Brizula and Finasteride, because we know what Brizula is able to do in terms of target area hair count, uh, versus like month zero versus month six, month 12. We also know it uh, with Finasteride, so it would be nice to compare it uh, together with KX826, so we know how this treatment kind of measures measures up against finasteride or uh, Brizula, a Clascoterone 7.5%. All right, guys. So uh, this is ex this is pretty much where we are right now. Also talking about the U.S. trial number two, which is now ongoing, and the trial number three, the final trial, which should start again by the end of 2021. If we take a look at the product pipeline of Kintour's treatment, treatment, uh, again, KX826, here you are. So we see it, androgenetic alopecia in China, we are a bit further here, okay? We are already in the phase two, as you can see it here, right? We are already here, phase two, and United States, uh, the, tr the phase two is being right now uh, done and phase two trial in China is already completed and it's uh, gonna reach the phase three uh, probably by the end of this year or early next year. And I assume like in the United States, they're gonna, there's gonna be the phase three trial also, uh, you know, I hope it's gonna start uh, next year also, hopefully. Then we can obviously start talking about potential approval of this treatment. So, all right guys, that was pretty much it on the topic of pyrolutamide or KX826. Um, I'm really interested in what were the results from the second trial on the 0.5% versus 0.25% solution of KX. And obviously they chose the 0.5% the, the concentration for the trial number three. That means the 0.5% will likely be uh, better or it likely yielded the best results in terms of target area hair count and maybe hair width improvements as well. That's gonna be another thing like, will it just be able to, uh, you know, grow some 
new hair or will it be able to thicken that hair as well like finasteride because finasteride obviously can do both not just uh, the improve the target area hair count so this will be interesting to me and hopefully i'm going to be able to get into the numbers and exact digits uh, what kx is able to grow in a specific period of time and i'm going to share it with you on the channel guys hopefully you like this video if you did make sure you smash that like button and uh, follow me on instagram check out uh, my website if you want to inform yourself more about hair transplants and how to get it done with success how to do it the right way without doing many mistakes during the hair transplant research like many guys do they do these decisions unfortunately impulsively because it's something they don't want to like talk about or discuss with other people and they that kind of you know leaves them with many black or blind spots until they get a transplant and maybe they go with a bad doctor and they will realize that mistake uh, after the fact unfortunately so if you want to avoid that if you want to get in touch with somebody who is an expert in this field who has done multiple hair transplants himself then you should go to my website and get on a one-on-one -on -one call with me where i can assist you directly with your hair transplant research help you choose the right clinic help you evaluate different alternatives that you have and definitely not force you to do the decision to get a hair transplant but rather step back take a look at the whole situation how good of a hair transplant candidate you really are and based on that recommend you the right option so that was it from me guys thank you so much for watching and i'm going to be seeing you soon in another video Take